Welcome to EDC Journeys. I am basically showing you my Spyderco collection up to date and discussing some random things that I want to talk about with Spyderco. Hope you enjoy the video and hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you do. What's going on EDC people and what is our journey today? I want to talk about Spyderco and I've done this video about five times but I just don't like how it comes out. I don't like how I'm my message is coming across. So I'm going to try again. I put these in order of what they cost. First of all, thank you very much to Jason Guilfoyle for an incredible guy, an incredible human being in general, uh, for gifting me these four of the five spider crows I have. I mean, I would never have had these without him, and I really, really, really appreciate that. And he has made me a spider go fanboy. <laughs> um, I got these two, no, these three at the same time. One, two, three. And I live with my father, as a lot of you who follow the channel know. My dad is also an, uh, an EDC or a knife enthusiast. So he fell in love with the size and audible sound of this knife, which is the Spyderco Resilience. So I don't typically use this, A, because it's very big for my hand, but he, he loves it and uses it daily. So that's why uh, it doesn't make much appearances, but he's here right now and I wanted to put it on the channel. Okay. This is the Spider Coefficient. It's an 8CR 13 MOV. It's surprisingly comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable Spider Co's I've ever held, held for me. It's a lot to do with that backspacer, I think. It just, I can feel the, it's just smooth on my hand. That forward choil just gives me great purchase on it, and I, I can. This is just a great design. It's an efficient design, hence why they call it the efficient. The brown scales are ugly as hell, but I don't care. It's a great way to get into Spyderco for under 50 bucks. You get the basic Spyderco design with the spidey hole, liner lock, 8CR13, and I'm here to tell you that's an average steel, an average budget steel. Uh, but to get it from Spyderco is going to be one of the best 8CRs you have. I mean, it just is. Spyderco does a great job with their heat treat. So comparing 8CR13 MOV on a Spyderco to, say, uh, I don't have something handy, PU, that the Spyderco heat treat on their 8CR is going to be better than Ganzo. 8CR is an ingot steel, right? So, uh as opposed to a powdered steel. So it's 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 budget but it is um, it's it's okay. It's easy to sharpen. And, it, and for most people it'll get you through your day's work. I love this knife. I've actually I, because it was an exclusive when I got these 3, I fell in love with the pair of 3 right away and I'm always and I'm still in love with the pair of 3. I carry this nearly every day. Okay, nearly every single day. But I, because this was ex an exclusive, even though it was a lower priced one, I felt it was special. So I kept it kind of put away until now. And just recently I've started using it more. And wow, I cannot believe the comfort. I can't believe the fidgetability. I used to complain about the, the size of that access spot. And sometimes it's still kind of, you know, I don't know, but it's because of the size of that access to the lock bar that makes it so fun to play with. Okay, so you're at forty-four bucks here to get into Spider to get into the basic Spiderco family. Meaning that there, there's also the Bird family, which is Spiderco, which is like twenty or thirty dollars. I have no experience with any of those, so I can't really speak to them. These are what I can speak about. If I had a shaman, I would put a shaman here too. That way I would have one, well, let me get over, let me, okay, so these two are 8CR, but
but you go you, it's a big jump you go from 44 45 bucks to like 80 bucks okay so it, it's still under 100 if you need a bigger knife because let's face it these two are very different in size <laughs> if your hand is big and you need, or you and or you want a bigger knife there you go but there are others in this uh, capacity what, let's see here in, not in this capacity in this family I meant to say and they are the like the tenacious the ambitious the persistence I think they're all in the same kind of lineup just based on size I think this is the biggest one of the budget you know family budget family I don't know where the where the efficient sits you know as far as if it's in this grouping or not but this is the efficient and I think it's a great you know I really like this knife for its comfort the steel eh, it's okay and but that's why it's 45 bucks you jump from 80 from 45 to 80 something to about 120 for a pair of three standard in s30v but you do get into powdered steel now so you've got the comfort you've got the compression lock Okay, that's that's one huge difference is the compression lock. By the way, that's a big thing, big jump, big step up, which is why the price is the way it is. If you happen to get or want like a sprint run or something, Spiderco. Okay, let me back up. Spiderco made the pair of three just as an example. You know, you could be talking about the PM2 as well. I'm just using this as the example. Okay, guys, could be the Manix, could be. They hit it out of the park with this design, clearly, obviously. Same with the PM2. So they do sprint runs, sprint runs of of or or, or uh, deals with other retailers or whatever, where they will do like this is where I said this is the stock, you know, standard uh, steel CPM S30V, which is fine for me for my use, by the way. Uh, and from probably for most people's use, it's probably overkill. But it's still a good steel. Like, that's the entry-level powder steel, basically. Essentially. Um, what am I trying to say? You Oh, you can get the, the pair of three, just like the PM2, just like the Manix, in all kinds of different steels. So if you'd prefer Maximum, let's say, you can. But there's going to be a big price difference. The standard... Uh, pair, uh, pair of three. This one here is about 120 bucks today. To go to the maximum one, which is out of stock right now, as far as I know, pretty much everywhere, it's like 180. So you're looking at another 60 dollar jump to go from the S30V to the maximum. Do you need maximum? Maybe, maybe not. Is maximum cool? Hell yes. <laughs> so. You know, one day maybe, uh, you know, because I love the pair of three, I can upgrade. But I don't need to, really, right now. I have the pair of three, and the S30V is working fine. I mean, the blade is still there, right? So, especially with the number of knives I have, I can rotate through, and, and I'm not using this constantly every single minute. Um, if, but for people who have maybe one knife... And that's your EDC, work knife, everything. Okay, that's understandable why you'd want something like Maximate. Because you don't have to sharpen it as much. It's a stronger steel and so on and so forth. We're not talking about corrosion. That's another thing, but whatever. Anyways, I have my Manix. Let me come around the other side of this. Okay. Now this one, it just so happens to be CPM S110V. Which... I have so little experience with. This is the only knife I have that's CPM 110V. It's the only knife I've ever had that's 110V. The first day I got it, I chipped it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I'm assuming that Jason, the person who gave it to me, maybe he didn't ever sharpen it or only sharpened it once or twice or whatever. So my point is, I'm thinking that the, the edge is still fairly factory -ish. and so it, it still needs probably a two three more sharpenings before you get past that the heat uh, damage done that they did at the factory probably into the really good steel but because it's a powdered steel it's gonna you know you're you're gonna have 
uh, what am I trying to say? It's going to be more, the carbides and stuff are, are more, oh boy, this is getting technical. Um, powdered steel is, is mixed, like a, like cake, like a cake batter. So it's, the steel is more consistent. And so as I sharpen this and get rid of their, the burnt edge that they made on the, on their grinding machine or whatever, does that make any sense? That a lot of times from the factory, they use belts or even wheels, depending on the type of knife you get and where you get it from. And they, you know, and then, and the belt can burn the edge of the steel, can mess up the heat treat. And there's ways to identify it, but I'm not I'm not confident in how to do that. But uh, there are ways apparently you can see some damage done or heat treat problems on the edge, or heat not heat treat problems, but heat damage problems um, from from grinding. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I believe I sharpened out the chip just fine. But I still believe it needs probably one more good sharpening before I get past that kind of that that factory steel and into the good quality steel. But for now, it's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sharpen it for no reason. Um, but CPMS 110V, I don't even know how to compare it to. You know what? I'm gonna look up Outpost 76. Good friend of mine, great guy, Gerald. I'm sure that his worksheet or whatever his little chart has you know how uh, S30V in Spyderco specifically compares to S110V in Spyderco specifically he cuts cardboard down to a science of how many feet you know uh, of, of fine edge meaning how, you know fine edge is when he, when he can shave hair off his arm and a working edge is when it no longer can shave hair off his arm but it can still cut paper so he does. He met, he cuts cardboard and measures how much he's cutting, and then tests it on his arm. You know, can I cut? Am I getting here? Am I getting here? And then once, once that's not possible anymore, once it's not able to cut his hair, it, he moves on to paper. He continues cutting the cardboard. He's measuring feet of how many feet of cardboard he's cutting, inches, whatever. Uh, and then once it's not able to cut through paper anymore, then he stops. And that you can either add the total footage together or look at the the uh, fine fine edge versus working edge performance, or you can combine it, which is what I do. And I just look at how much how many feet did you cut? Period. How many feet did this did S30V from Spyderco cut compared to S110V? That's that's basically how I judge that's how I use outpost 76 he, he's a good guy he's smart he's knowledgeable but his the chart that and him and blade banter and all them and love them knives do and super steel sieve or whatever um, I'm just naming outpost 76 because he's a friend of mine there's many people that are involved in all that testing but he does it as well and he's a good guy if you have questions about steel or steel types or what you know anything like that hit him up he's he's a smart dude and he really is good about getting back to people these were gifts and i love and appreciate every single one of them and i like i said I've, i am now a spider co fanboy i love spider co's so i went and i finally got the one this this knife there's a long story behind it but it basically got me to folding knives so it, it has a special place to me it's, it's expensive and I got it. So it's it's especially important because it's it's got a story behind it, and I bought it myself, tech, you know, basically, and so therefore it's kind of got a, a different feeling. I've got a different feeling towards this knife. But now, where was I? Forty-five dollars, eighty dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars, Manix. Okay, the Manix with the regular S30V, I believe, is back down towards the 120, 130 price range. So you're not far off of your Pira 3 price. You can choose Manix or Pira 3, basically. I mean, within 10, 20 dollars. From what I googled today, uh, things change, prices change. Uh, but 
the S110V version is more like 180. Okay, so you're approaching the $200 mark to get the S110V. Is that worth it to you? Do you need or want? Um, let's see if it's a hundred. Say, say it's 120 for the S30V. Let's just say, and this is let's say 190 after taxes and everything. You know, you're talking about you know 70 bucks more for the steel change. Of course, you get the blurple scales, which are beautiful, except for I've got uh, compound all over it right now. But I guess my point is, you know, S110V, great, I'm happy, I love that I have it, but and I love the scales, I, it's great, but I don't know if I ever would need S110V. I don't know how it performs compared to S30V, I'm going to have to look into that more to tell you about it. But the Manix can be bought in many different steel types as well. This particular one is expensive because it's the S110V. That's all I'm trying to say. That was a long-winded story for that. And then you get to the Spidey Chef, which is made of LC200N. It's got that weird sheep's foot blade shape, right? It's supposed to look like a, it's supposed to basically be a food prep knife. Except for it works perfect for EDC as well, and that's what I use it for. Although I use it in a way that um, I would use this for my dirty work, this Manix, and I would I would use this to cut things and, and do things EDC, but not as dirty because I I intend on keeping it in good condition, and I want to be able to even though there's cat fuzz all over it right now. Um, it's under the clip. Um, you know, I maybe I do want to use it for food prep one day. Uh, of course, I'll wash it before I do that. I'm not going to just pull it out of my sweaty pocket and cut food with it. But I like the idea that it can do both. But the price is, you're talking like $230. So you go from 180 for this exact one with CPM S110V. To 230. Okay, so that's another $50 jump. But here's the thing the budget ones are made in China. Okay, and there's no, I have nothing bad to say. In fact, I praised them, right? I told you this is probably the most comfortable Spider Co I've held so far. Although I've heard the shaman is going to change my opinion on these things. You need a bigger version? Here you go. It's more expensive though. Then you get into the the, the uh, compression locks with a pair of twos, a pair of threes, or PM2, whatever, and even the Shaman. But um, then the Manix has the ball bearing lock, which is very strong. With no clip on here, I have a hard time manipulating this blade. Because I have no nothing to leverage on, so I need to like wiggle my hand down to get it, and then I can. Okay. Anyways, and I don't often swing it out, but like that, I usually use the the thumb loop. Anyways, this is from uh oh so these two are from uh <laughs> Earth, no they're from Golden well yes they're from Golden Colorado, USA made. Earth. These two are USA made. China, USA, Taichung, Taiwan. As far as uh, Spider Co goes, I believe they have a factory in Japan as well where they do like their VG10, because VG10 of course is, is a Japanese, well whatever. Uh, I don't have any examples of that. I believe the Delica has VG10, I could be wrong on that. But the difference, the Tai Chung factory is known, well known at this point for its, its tolerances being so great and its fit and finish being perfect. And so like the Sleesh buoy, and I always say his name wrong, so I'm sorry, Marcin Sleesh, but that's how I say your name I, unless somebody tells me how to say it. Um, but the, the Sleesh buoy, 
the Spidey Chef, the Techno, the Techno 2, those are a different thing, in my opinion, than these knives. They're they're kind of like I don't know how to explain it. They're 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 a different breed of Spyderco, in my opinion. So there you go. I see these more as Spydercos than this. Uh, it's still I well I shouldn't have said that. I see these more as your typical you know you see this in someone's pocket as spider co you know th whereas this is kind of like a, a specialty and i think that's where tai chung taiwan factory um excels is in making these uh specialized titanium you know uh certain particular liner lo or full uh, frame lock type knives in the U.S., it looks like they're, you know, the, the the compression locks, the ball bearing locks, the paras, the 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 the, the bloodline of Spider Co. Those knives. And then the budgets are made in China. Why? Well, let's be honest. It's cheaper, right? I mean, now, do I? Why is Tai Chung Taiwan renowned for being better than the U.S. or whatever? I don't I don't mean better, but the factory there is known to to make higher quality stuff than anywhere u.s right there with it but cl a close second i don't know i don't know what my point is with all that you can get into spider co for under 50 bucks then you go to 80 120 180 for the 110 120 or 130 for the s30 v version then you jump to 230 you don't need to go there though you can start over here 8 cr is fine lc 200 n is awesome it just depends on what you like this to me is worth the money because I love this knife. This to me, if I bought it, <laughs> would be would have been worth the money because I love this knife. The only one I wouldn't have bought out of this is this one. And that's simply because of the size. But like I told you, I basically gifted it to my father. So it's only here to visit. So there you go, guys. That's my Spyderco collection. Uh, I don't know exactly what my point is in all this. It's more or less me telling you about the plants, you know, the uh, Taiwan, U.S., China, but that you can get into Spydercos at a much lower price than a lot of people think, that they're good knives, even at this level. I love this knife. I'm, I'm, the more I use it, the more I like it. I can get such a good grab on this knife. I can honestly get the, a better feel. On, I mean, I like, I love the Para 3, and, and anyone who follows my channel knows I, I love the Para 3. I use it all the time, all the time. But this, if I'm being honest, this is more comfortable in hand, for my hand. Whether it is for your hand, that's another story, but somehow this is just more comfortable. It fills my hand in just the right spots. So, you know, it, just because it's budget doesn't mean it's bad. Look at that line, too. It's very cool. Then you go, well, you know, once you jump and make the jump to compression lock, you're over $100, but everyone Include, and I gotta clean this, that's why it's not dropping so well now. But everyone loves the compression lock. It's a great lock. It's gotta be one of the most fidget friendly locks there is, which is absolutely half of the reason why I love knives because of the fidget factor. Sorry, it's the truth. I know a lot of people don't like that idea. But the reality is, I fidget with these more than I actually use them. I do use them but I actually fidget with my knives more than I use them. Isn't that sad? At least for now. Anyways, I wish I could fidget with this one better. Let's see, it's just, well, maybe it just needs to break in more. I don't know how new it was when I got it. I, I feel like I just assumed it was well used, but between the chipping, or that one chip, and it was a tiny chip, by the way, and the fact that I just can't manipulate this so well it makes me wonder if it's fairly new or was newer or not so much used. 
when he gave it to me. And do all Manixes make that huge ting when they go in? That's a question I have for you, if you have one. Hear this? Watch. Listen. And then the Spidey Chef. I can manipulate the Spidey Chef just fine. I love using it. And I love flicking it. Anyways, my daughter needs me. So that's the lineup. Perfect timing. Have a good day, guys. Not sure what the point of the video is, but this is my spider Spiderco collection. And that's what I have to say about them. Have a good day. Oh, 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 oh. One more thing, guys. I think I'm going to use this knife just since it's sitting out here and it's a Ganzo, honestly. Um, to sharpen on a brick. A red brick, a lumpy ass red Drury made by Bob Drury, D R U R Y, it says right across the brick. Uh, brick. And I'm going to dull it on that brick, and then I'm going to sharpen it on that brick. And that's not going to probably be hair whittling sharp. And God, I hope it doesn't make a fool of myself, but I'm going to record myself sharpening this knife on a brick to show you that it's not necessarily the uh what am i trying to say the um it's not necessarily the equipment the stones you don't need to get the best there is sometimes when you're in the bush or when you're out in the field you don't have choices and uh even though i wouldn't want to do that with any of these knives um i'm just going to show you that it's possible that i can get a an edge, a working edge, f from a dull knife on a brick. So, I'm going to use the Ganzo to do that. I believe I'll use this one. If I don't, don't sue me. But, that or the, uh, that little chef knife I got for, ex for sh practice sharpening. But, uh, so look forward to that to come. Alright guys, this is more of just a chat, I guess than anything else and I wanted to show off the spider goes and talk about them all right peace this is seriously difficult to do from this location and the cash is happy to just sit right on the manix no problem obstacles Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Have a great day.